Praise the Lord. This is Reverend Michael Jakes, Associate Pastor of Bethesda Church of God in Christ in Brooklyn, New York. And I'm so glad you could join us on this edition of the Upper Room Ministries broadcast. My prayer is that you'll be blessed and enlightened as you listen to the Word and to worship. It's God's intention, I believe, that you'll be mightily enriched.
shackles that make me cannot walk or else the, the shackles the chains that make me cannot raise my hand and praise him. I don't know what you came to do, but I want to tell you victory is mine. You want to praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You don't want to praise the Lord, that's your business, but I'm going to praise the Lord. You don't know what you came for, but I know what I came for.
It's all about you. It's all about you. Lydia, it's all about Jesus. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus. Edie, it's all about Jesus. It's not about you. Everybody here is not about you. It's about Jesus. So that means you're not saying, Lord, take control of the mind. The mind that want to run, but I sometimes you will feel that you're so overwhelmed that you can't even focus. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Hallelujah. We bless you. We thank you for your presence, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the next few moments of time, Lord, we pray that your spirit might be made manifest, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask that your spirit might fall in this place, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray that somehow, Lord Jesus, you might cause uh, your people, Lord Jesus, to rise up against the enemy today, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to watch the enemy flee from our presence today, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, we pray that you will move, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your people with peace. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's good to be in God's house once again. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in God's house. Amen. Is it good to be in God's house? Amen. It's good to be in God's house. And I want you to, I want you to purpose. I want you to make up your mind today. Now be careful if you agree to this. Be careful. Be careful. But I want you to make up your mind today that whatever comes your way this week, and we know for the following, but we're talking, we're taking one day at a time. Whatever comes your way this week, for the next six days in between the next Sunday, I want you to purpose in your mind right now that you are going to praise God. Amen. Now I know there were some hard words. Yeah. Because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what somebody's going to do. You don't know what somebody's going to say. You don't know what's going to happen. But I want you to purpose in your mind right now that whatever comes in your direction that happens to you, that you are going to praise God. Amen. To praise God. Because that's sometimes that's all that you have left is to praise God. Yes. When you don't know what to do, you don't know where to go, you don't know how to do, you got to praise Amen. God. Amen. And let God be God. You got to let God be God. I want to take you to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Just keep it right there in 2 Timothy chapter 1. to read verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7. Let's all stand please. 2 Timothy chapter 1 starting in verse number 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You may be seated. One little verse, but that one little verse is one big verse. Amen. Because this one verse describes a vast majority of individuals in the kingdom of God. There is the individuals in the kingdom of God, we as children of God, and I've talked about it and I've talked about it over and over again. But what I continue to hear by individuals as I go through life is I just don't feel worthy. I don't feel worthy to do what it is that God has called me to do. Or I don't feel like I'm good enough. Or else I don't know what it is that I'm supposed to do. I want to talk to you just for a few moments about the thief of purpose. The thief of purpose, which is intimidation. 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 If you've ever backed away from confrontation, if you've ever allowed yourself to be controlled by other people because you just don't want to get yourself deeply involved, if you wind up, if you wound up saying yes to something that you feel is no, but you do it because you just don't want to, you just don't want to uh, uh, come under any kind of, uh, uh, have any kind of confrontation, then then you've experienced intimidation, intimidation. You have a gift. 
you have a gift of God that, that he has given you. I have a gift, you have a gift. I may have several gifts. You may have several gifts. But you have at least one gift that God has given you. God did not call us to sit on our gift. He did not call us to sit upon what it is that he has given us to do for his kingdom. We need to be about doing the Father's business. But intimidation comes. Intimidation comes to rob you of what God has called you to do. Intimidation comes to steal from you your purpose because as long as you allow intimidation to rule in your life, you are honoring that intimidation more than you honor the word of God. And that's what you do not want to do. Paul says here, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let me tell you what intimidation does. Intimidation unleashes several things in your life. Intimidation unleashes confusion in your life. You don't know why you feel the way you feel. You don't know why you feel this this overwhelming sense of I just can't do it. You don't know why you feel this overwhelming fear of I I, I can't move, I can't go, I I, I need, I know I should, I know I, I could, I know I can, but I just, I don't. I don't. Intimidation. Intimidation. You must not allow yourself to be intimidated to the point where you become confused. God is not the author of confusion. God is not behind that. Intimidation also will unleash discouragement in your life. Once you realize that you're not operating in the gift that God has given you, and you know that you are being disobedient to the call, that it brings on a level of discouragement. I know I should be, and I'm not. So God is not happy, and I'm not happy. And it brings on a whole line of of, of depression and discouragement because intimidation has come into your life. Intimidation also leads to frustration. Frustration. Many people have done some silly things, foolish things, simple things, all under the banner of frustration. Frustration frustration will cause you to do things that you would not normally do. Simply because you are frustrated about how things are, about the outcome, about the situation, about the circumstance. You are you are frustrated and intimidation will bring a level of frustration in your life once again because you know that you're not operating in that thing that God has called you to do. You won't step out. You won't get out of the box. Finally, it leads to hopelessness. I can't get out. I'm always going to be this way. I'm never going to move. I'm always... How am I ever going to move from this place that I'm at? I can't get out. It leads to hopelessness. I can't move. I cannot move. Intimidation. Intimidation. The object, the whole object of intimidation, and the enemy brings intimidation into our life. The whole object of intimidation is to restrain you from doing something and forcing you into submission. I can't go any further. I can't move. I just can't do it because this thing has has got a grip of me. And sometimes you don't even know what it is. Sometimes you don't even know why it is that you are the way you are. Sometimes you don't even know why you feel that way. You don't even know why you have this overwhelming sense of fear and intimidation when it when you're doing something that you know you can do. Intimidation. Intimidation. The purpose of intimidation is to prevent you from starting or even completing God's purpose for your life. See, the enemy the enemy doesn't know what it is that God has you to do. 
But as long as you are in God's camp and not in the enemy's camp, the enemy is going to pick and pick and pick until he finds something that he can grab a hold of. And if he can grab a hold of you and cause you to be at a, a fear and, and be intimidated, then he will grab on and he will hold you there if you let him. If you let him. The goal, the goal of intimidation is to cause you to lose three things. Intimidation will cause you to lose three things. It will cause you to lose your perspective. You, won't, you don't see things clear anymore. You don't see things right anymore. You lose perspective. You don't get the big picture anymore. All you can think about is you. You are intimidated. I, I, I can't, I can't. You lose perspective. You don't see everything else. You don't see how you not doing what you're supposed to do will affect somebody else. We're so wrapped up in ourselves. So intimidation causes you to lose perspective. Second, it causes you to lose your passion. Your passion. You know what it is that you... I want to do it. I have a desire to do it. God has placed it in me to do it. I don't know what it is, but God has placed me here to do it. And I just can't. I just can't. I have the passion, but I can't move out in the passion. You're intimidated. You're intimidated. Finally, the main thing that happens, the main thing that happens when intimidation gets a hold of your life or if intimidation gets a hold of my life, the main thing that will happen and the enemy's number one goal strips you of your power. It strips you of your power. It strips you of your authority. You can no longer stand up to the enemy. He has stripped your authority away. What the devil wants more than anything is the very thing that was taken from him at the cross. At the cross, we find out in, in Colossians 2 and verse 16, I believe, is that Jesus, through his crucifixion, made a spectacle of the enemy and took all of his power and authority away at the cross. And ever since then, he's been trying to get his authority back. And if he can get it back through you, he will do it. If you lay down your authority, if you willingly lay down your authority, he will pick it up and use it against you. So you need to be very, very careful. You don't want the enemy to use authority against you. Remember, he doesn't have it. By right, he does not have authority over you. But if you lay it down because of intimidation, remember intimidation, I'm frozen. I'm, I'm fearful. I can't. I can't. You're not operating no longer. You're no longer operating under the authority of God. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. And that's the number one thing he's after. He's after the authority that was stolen from him. He wants it back. One at a time. He'll go from one child of God at a time to try to take that authority. And remember, the authority that he gives you is not his. And it's not real authority because you still have the authority. But because you are fearful and intimidated, you won't step out in authority. You won't do it. So many different things that intimidate. Your sin, your sin, our sin, intimidates. I can't go, I can't move because God is angry and I have so much sin in my life and I'm not perfect and I, and I just can't and, and I keep doing this and I keep acting this way and I keep and all these things in my head, you don't know what and I, intimidation. Intimidation. Sickness can intimidate you. I can't go I can't do, I can't be because I am this way. Sickness can intimidate. Circumstances, just simple circumstances, difficulties in your life, problems can intimidate you and bring you to a point of submission. I give up, I can't, I do. No more! Intimidation. Your past. Your past. Who put a rock right in front of of your progress if you let it your past your past the enemy will always bring up your past in your face 
Your past, you have to remember, your past is, if you're in Christ, your past is under the blood. Whatever you did in the past is under the blood. God has forgiven you. It's over. Stop thinking about what you did. Stop thinking about who you did it to. Stop thinking. It is forgiven. It is over. God is not holding your sin against you anymore. You have to learn how to let that thing go. Or let those things go. They don't apply to you anymore. I'm under the blood, the precious blood, under the cleansing, healing blood. Keep me saving from day to day. Under the precious blood. Your sins are under the blood. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And there may I go violently. Wash all my sins away. Your sins are gone. Are gone. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. Your sins have been washed away under the blood of Jesus Christ. And the enemy cannot, he does not have a right to show those things in your face. He's a liar. The devil is a liar. Your past can intimidate you if you allow the enemy to take you there. Yes, and he will take you there. But, let's talk about two, quickly, let's talk about two examples of two individuals that dealt with intimidation in two different ways. First we go to 1 Kings. 1 Kings in chapter 19. Come on. 1 Kings chapter 19. Starting in verse number 1. It says, Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Elijah, mighty man of God, mighty man of God, on the same day that he saw the fire of God fall, he was rendered helpless because he was intimidated by the threats of a woman. Absolutely mortified, intimidated by what she said. It is after great victory, after great glory, after great hallelujahs, that the enemy will swoop down and try to take your life. He will try to take the glory out of your praise. He will try to take the praise out of your glory. He will try to take the life out of your soul. He will suck the air out of your spirit. He will do whatever he can right after God has moved in your life. Do everything he can to tell you that God, God, that was not really God. He's not there. Look what will happen now. You, you have to take a page out of David's book where he says that he encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Look what this mighty man Elijah had done. Remember he was in the contest with the, with the priests of Baal, 450 priests. And God's fire came down. And the priests, they were slain. And he's there. And this woman Jezebel, who is another subject altogether, this woman Jezebel speaks, sends a word to him, telling him that in 24 hours, she put a hit out on this man of God. In 24 hours, Elijah, man of God, 
you will die. And he fell apart. He fell apart. The stress, the pressure of ministry, all the things that he had done. You see, what people don't understand, what people do not understand is ministry takes a toll on your body. Amen. Ministry takes a toll on your body. Amen. It absolutely does. And it's at those weakened times when your body is dead, out of it, floating, when it's when the enemy can enter in and put things in your heart, things in your mind, and you can't flourish, and you can't function, and you can't move because the enemy is working on you because ministry you down. It pressed you down. But Amen. this man, this man Elijah, he rises up and he runs for his life. He runs. The man runs about 40 miles. That's how much he runs. I ain't lying when I say he ran. He ran hard. He ran. And he came into the wilderness running from your purpose because of intimidation will always and only lead you to wilderness. Where am I? Because you're not operating in the authority that God gave you. All Elijah had to do, I don't with what he had just seen God do, all he had to do was stand up to the words. The woman wasn't even standing there at the moment. These were words written down on a paper or else the messenger came and told him what she had said and just those words just melted him down. All he had to do was stand up in the name of the Lord and speak God's word and speak God's purpose and could have defeated this woman and her words. She would have her day eventually. But he runs the wilderness and he resigns he sits down intimidation will always lead you into the wilderness and it will always lead you to sit down no longer operate I'm not doing what God called me to do I'm not doing what God said I am relaxing I I can't move and he went and he sat down prayed and he said Lord take my life the pressure the pressure I don't know if you've ever said those words I don't know if you've ever said those words he said take my life let me die he says too much it's too much he said it is enough and now intimidation had brought him to a place of condemnation now because now he was feeling that he wasn't good as everybody else because he says I now take my life because I'm not better than my father's I'm, the, I'm, I'm no good I'm no good take me kill me I, let me go let me die leave me to myself he comes an angel feeds him tells him to arise and eat a couple of times in the, in the, in the verses that follow and then he comes in verse 9 he comes to a cave And he spends the night in the cave. And behold, verse 9, the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing? You are the prophet of God. You are the man of God. I have put my word in your mouth. I have put my call on your life. I put my purpose in you. What are you doing here? from God's purpose in your life? No, no, You cannot do it. You can try. You can try. Right. Or you can try to run. You can try. It's, it's been done. It's, it, people have ran. And people have tried to hide. But you cannot get away from the voice of God. You cannot get away from God's purpose in your life. And he goes and he hides in the cave. What are you doing here? What's going on, Elijah? What's the problem? He had been intimidated to the point of resignation 
no more, no more. And eventually he does get several, God gets several other, other people involved. We're not going to go through the whole story, but he gets several other individuals involved. And eventually Jezebel does lose her life. But Elijah, the point I'm trying to make is this mighty man of God, Elijah, who you would not think would be guilty of it. No. Ran. Ran away. Fearful and afraid. Because of intimidation. Intimidation will make you run. Intimidation will make you hide. I don't want to deal with confrontation. I don't want to deal. Intimidation will make you back up. Intimidation will make you go in a corner and just sit there and be silent. Intimidation. But that's the whole purpose of intimidation. God, rather the enemy, use intimidation to keep your mouth shut. He wants to keep your mouth shut. He wants to keep your gift silent. He wants to keep you out of God's business. That's what intimidation does. But when you go to First, First Samuel, the book of First Samuel, chapter seventeen, First Samuel, chapter seventeen. Verse number 45. Now this is how you deal with intimidation. This is how you handle intimidation. You don't run. You don't run from threatening voices. You don't run from the enemy's words. You do not, you do not run away from a giant that might be in your life. You do not run away. You face intimidation. You confront intimidation with boldness. You face intimidation with the knowledge of who you are in Christ. You face intimidation. You stand up to intimidation. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine. You come to me with a sword. With a spear. And with a javelin. You come to me with some little old weapons made by some little old men. Weapons. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. That's how you deal with intimidation. You stand up to intimidation in the name of the Lord. Not in your name. Forget that. You, you, I'm sorry, but you, you, when it comes to that, when it comes to dealing with a giant in your life, when it comes to dealing with intimidation or whatever it is that you're fighting in your life that's holding you down and keeping you back and causing you not to flow in the gift that God has called you in, your name doesn't work. He came against This intimidation, this 10 foot man in armor, and he came against him in the name of the Lord. The same way that David came against intimidation is the same way we have to come against intimidation. We gotta be bold, we gotta be strong. It's a song that we used to sing back in the day be strong, be be bold, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for the Lord thy God is with you. You know the song I'm talking about. You have to be bold. You have to stand up to the enemy. You have to stand up to the enemy. You know, <laughs> I don't know why this, 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 this little guy just came in my head. All right. But it must be for a reason. Because I see, I see him when I think of somebody little standing up in somebody's face. Kevin Hart. That's a little man right there. <laughs> 
He's a grown man, but he's a little grown man. And to see him standing by these at the All Star game, see him standing next to these ball players and stand up, and it's just like it's, it's, David was a little man standing in front of Goliath, and he is standing. Remember, David was no more than sixteen or seventeen years old. He wasn't a grown man. He was a boy. He was a teenager. And here he is standing up and talking big, bold words to a man that was three feet taller than Shaquille O'Neal. Ten feet tall. Ten feet tall. I know Shaq is big. I know he think he all that. But Goliath, Goliath was the man. Goliath was the man. Goliath was, in wrestling, you got the big show. The big show, that dude, the big show. Goliath was the big, big, big show. He was, he, Goliath was 10 feet tall. Ain't nobody messing with him. Nobody messing with him. And he stood in this giant's face and said, I come to you, or rather, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. He, and, and, and David didn't have any weapons except a slingshot with three little rocks. Five little rocks? Was it five or three? Five. My wife says five rocks. Five. I heard somebody say four. Five. He came against it with a, a, with a handful of rocks. <laughs> He swung that thing around, and Goliath was probably standing over there still giggling, laughing. And he swings and he swings and catches my man right in the middle of his forehead and killed him. Killed him. One killed him. Dead. And everybody ran. See, this is how we have to deal with intimidation. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, the Bible says. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You have to be bold, you have to be strong, and you have to stand up for what you know to be right and proper. You got, you got to do it, because if you don't, if you don't, this thing called intimidation will paralyze you. It's going to paralyze you. Five smooth stones. Five smooth stones. That's all it took. Come with me real quick as we close to Psalm 59. Psalm 56, rather. Psalm 56. You got to break intimidation in your life. It must be broken. And maybe you feel that you... you you're not intimidated by anything. Maybe you feel that way. But you got to break it. You got to break it. If you're not stepping up and stepping out and doing what God has called you to do, if for some reason you find yourself paralyzed by the fact that you have to minister or you have to do this or you have to do anything concerning the, the things of God, you got to step out. Don't allow the enemy to intimidate you. Don't allow the enemy to intimidate you. Okay? I remember when I had to I remember when I had to to preach for the first time for the first time I said I'm not no preacher I'm not no preacher I can't preach uh, I was petrified when I, say, when I say scared, I was scared. Scared. Sweaty palms, sweaty forehead. I'm talking about scared. But once you begin to speak, the Holy Spirit takes over. The Holy Spirit takes over. 
So intimidation can be broken. In Psalm 56, he says in verse number 3, he says, whenever, whenever I am afraid, number one, I will trust you. I will trust you. You want to begin to break intimidation in your life. I will trust you, Lord. Simple words. They've been said by greater men than me, but I will trust in you, Lord. Break intimidation. Stand up to intimidation. Lord, I will trust you. This is your call. This is not about me. This is all about you. I will trust you, Lord. Break intimidation. Break intimidation. Lord, I bless your name. Lord, I thank you. 
Lord, you have held me. You have kept me up to, as this far. Lord, I will continue. I will thank you. Lord, I bless you. I bless you. If you do these things, you will begin to knock intimidation out of your life. But if you don't, if you don't, intimidation will lock you up. It will steal from you. Remember, it is the thief of your purpose. Intimidation. Intimidation. Don't allow yourself to be imprisoned by it because once you are imprisoned by intimidation, you can't flex. You can't move. You have no authority. You have no power. Let me say again. You do have it. But because this intimidation has gotten you wrapped up, you will not operate in your authority. This is a big thing that we talk about all the time, that we've been talking about this whole year. We've been talking about authority. This is a big deal. But remember, the bigger deal, even greater than your authority, yes. is the fact that you are saved. Rejoice rather that your names, that Jesus said, rejoice more so that your names are written in heaven. That's, that's what you should always thank God for. Your salvation. Your salvation. Lord, I thank you for saving me. Lord, I thank you for keeping me, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for dropping this authority in my life, Lord Jesus. Because through it, Lord Jesus, I am able to overcome. Through it, I am able to conquer. When the enemy comes in like a blood, Lord, I will stand up against him. I will not allow intimidation to go on in my life. I will not allow the devil to tell me that I can't. Because if you allow him to tell you you can't do this, that he will tell you that you can't do that. You won't do anything of value in the kingdom because you have been absolutely floored by intimidation. Intimidation! It's a killer of your dreams. It is a thief of your purpose. Intimidation. I can't. I can't. I, I can't. I can't. Intimidation. Beat it. Beat it. Stand up against it. Flow in your purpose. Bow your heads, please. Bow your heads. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we know what we're talking about today. Lord, we've had bouts with intimidation. Lord, we've dealt with intimidation before. We speak, we speak from a place of experience. We know what it feels like to be intimidated. We know what it feels like to run away from confrontation. Run away from the loud voice. Run away from the overpowering presence. Don't want anything to do with it. intimidation is through trust it's through praise it's through thanksgiving through honoring you and remembering who I am in you Lord Jesus Lord you created me to serve and Lord I will serve Lord, I will not allow the enemy to take away that which you have called me to do. I will not allow the enemy to take away my purpose. Lord, I want to operate. I want to flow in what you have called me to do, Lord Jesus. He doesn't even want me to get started. And if you're here today, you don't even know what your purpose is. If you're saved here, you don't even know what you should be doing for the Lord. That's where the devil wants to keep you. He wants to keep you wrapped up and confused. What God has called you to do. That's where He wants you. He's here to strip you of your purpose, your perspective, your power, and your authority. Don't let Him do it. Don't let Him do it. Don't let Him do it. Lord Jesus, have your way with your people, Lord Jesus. 
Have your way with your people, Jesus. Hallelujah. We call on you today. We call on you today, Lord Jesus. Lord, you have the words of eternal life, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many are dealing with this thing called intimidation. Hallelujah. But Lord, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, Lord Jesus. Lord, we will bless you, Lord Jesus. We will thank you forevermore, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. 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 Let's begin to worship God. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 If you're here today and you're in the grips, you're in the grips of intimidation of some sort. Something is holding you back. You're intimidated by something, someone. You need to come. You need to come. Hallelujah. 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 Intimidation, it's a thief. It's a thief. It's a thief. It'll rob you of everything that God wants you to do. It'll rob you of everything that God has for you. Because you won't step out. You won't go because you're afraid. You're fearful. You're intimidated. You're frozen. Step out on God's word. Step out. Remember, it says in Psalm 56, I will praise his word. I will praise his word. Step out. Step out. Step out. Do not be intimidated. Do not be intimidated. Hallelujah. Call the devil what he is. He is a liar. He is a liar. Do not allow him to strip you of your authority. Your authority that Christ has given you, he can't have it. He cannot have your authority. It does not belong to him. And do not lay it down for him to take because what he lay, what you lay down, the enemy will take and try to use it against you. Hallelujah. 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 This thing called authority has been a revelation to many. But revelation without the ability to carry out, it won't do you any good. It does no good to know you have authority unless you operate in that authority. Apply that authority to your life and begin to move in it. If you're intimidated, you need to step out. You need to step out. Your past is intimidating you. What you once were, what you did is intimidating you. Your thoughts, things that you did in the past still are affecting you. You need to step out. You need to step out. Let God have his way. Give God your mind. Mr. Edie was talking about our minds. So many things in your mind. Those, those things can be intimidating. And you cannot move. You cannot blow. Because your mind is so wrapped up in itself. And what you did. And what's going on in circumstances. Step out. Step out. Step out. Jesus wants to free your mind. Jesus wants to free your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're dealing with something right now. You're dealing with something. It's an intimidating circumstance. You don't know what to do. And, and you're just standing still. You need to step out. You need to step out. Step out. Hallelujah. 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 Ask him to have his way. Ask God to have his way. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord to have his way in your life. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some have been hurt. They don't want to be hurt anymore. They're intimidated. I don't want to be there again. I don't want to go there again. I don't want to, I, I don't want to go there anymore. I, I can't. I can't. You're intimidated. You're intimidated. You need to step out. You need to step out. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your people are crying out to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. When we cry out. Hallelujah. When we cry out. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Jesus. God has not given us that spirit of fear. He has not given us that spirit of timidity. Hallelujah. But a power and love and a sound mind. Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. You see that word in intimidation is the word timid. Timid. He has not given us that spirit. Step out. Step out. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise God. 
Begin to praise God. Begin to praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to praise God. Begin to praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Do not allow the devil to condemn you because of your past. Because of your present. Do not let him condemn you. Do not allow him to intimidate you. Hallelujah. Your sins are under the blood. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus does not hold those sins against you anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes thoughts of your past scare you. They scare you. You don't want to be brought back to that place again. And you're intimidated. You can't go any further because you're caught up in your past. God has freed you from your past. He has freed you. He has set you free. Do not be entangled again with that yoke of bondage. Don't come under condemnation. Do not come under bondage again. Hallelujah. 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 Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 He told Timothy, Paul told Timothy Timothy to stir up the gift that was within him. There is a gift in you. There is a gift in you that God wants to use you to bless others. As long as you remain intimidated, you will not bless others and you will not be blessed yourself. You must rise up from the sea of intimidation. Hallelujah. Step out. Step out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Step out. Step out. Allow yourself to be used by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no greater thing than to be used by God. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.